grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And as we gather this evening to celebrate the Eucharist, we come before the Lord, acknowledging our sins and trusting in his gracious forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, Christ, and on earth, peace to the people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we enjoy you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God and the King, O oh God, and my Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Isaiah. In the year King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated at the high and lofty throne, with a train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I have a band of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with clouds from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, this wickedness is removed, your sin is purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, said me. The word of the Lord.
and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats, so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For the astonishment of the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. The uh, readings tonight, of course, are dominated by two call stories. Obvious reason, they're referred to as call stories, the story of Isaiah and his call to be a prophet, and the story of Simon in the boat with Jesus, called to follow and become fishers of men. And when I hear these stories, I'm reminded of, of uh, an incident that took place uh, in uh, my life uh, many years ago when I was a uh, beginning my senior year in high school. Now, in those days, back in the 60s, I graduated in 1968, for those who wonder, and there was such a thing as a prep seminar. In fact, it's interesting that the most seminarians ever uh, uh, listed in the uh, United States that year was 1968 with the prep seminaries, the major seminaries. And there were so many young people, in fact, interested in the priesthood that they had high school seminaries. And that's where I went, Pius X High School in Unionville. Now, at the end of four years, when we finished high school, the question was whether we would go on to the college. And so we had to, those of us who said what well, we're going on in my graduating class, I think we had uh, 60 in that graduating class, so numbers considering uh, great, um, the, we had to go in and talk to the rector. And he would then uh, interview us and talk to us about whether or not we really wanted to go to uh, the next step. And I remember going in and there was uh, uh, Father Christopher Huntington at that time was the rector. And I sat down and he asked me uh, what I was thinking. And I said, well, you know, I've been here for the, uh, the four years and looking ahead, but you know, I have really a great doubt. So I just don't think that, uh, you know, looking at uh, myself and looking ahead, uh, uh, you know, I just don't think, uh, well, I just don't think I'm worthy uh, to go on. So he looked at me and he said, you're right, you're not. Are you going or not? <laughs> and I said, well, that's good talk. But, uh, uh, yeah, you're not. No one is. No one is. But are you coming? Responded. And I, I think of that story because there I was, and if I... Uh, because of what uh, Father Huntington said to me at that time at Jolt, uh, I, I realized I had a choice. I was going to look back on it. Either to decide, no, no, I, I couldn't do this, it's way beyond me, and it's not something I need. <laughs> or to trust to go to the next step. To go to the next step. Uh, to trust, as I like to put it, that um, God knew what he was doing, even if I didn't think so at the time. 
And I, I think of that story because as I look, of course, at the two stories today, we have there two men, Isaiah and then Simon, and they are both in the, uh, the experiences they have, one of a, uh, a vision uh, and the other of uh, his experience with Jesus in the boat and the tremendous catch of fish. They are both in the face of that experience of uh, a divine manifestation of, of, of power, of presence. They're both overcome, shaken by their sinfulness. Whoa, I am going to die. I am a sinful man. Away from me. I am a sinful man. A sinful man. And in one case, we have in the vision God's initiative to send the seraph with the coal to touch his lips. And the other, of course, we have Jesus saying to get up, to come, follow. In both cases, the individuals, even though it doesn't say so in so many words, had to decide, had to make a choice, had to make a choice whether they would indeed, in the case of Isaiah, trust in God's call. In the case of Simon, trust in the invitation of Jesus, trust to leave everything to follow. And that, those decisions, as dramatic as they are, are very, the stories are important to us on a number of levels number of levels. Certainly, as I suggest, uh, it's something that I had to choose, and many other people who would be in the priesthood, religious life, the acting in, I'm sure, you know, you have to make a choice at times, because we become aware that we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We are sinners. We know better than anyone else. But do I trust in God? Do I trust in God's choice? Do I trust that God knows what he is doing in choosing me, in choosing you? All of us, when we talk about it, we talk about those experiences. And that is true, not just for people who were ordained or religiously professed, but for all by virtue of call and baptism. You know, we've been reading these past couple of weeks, today we saw it in the second reading to uh, Paul's, when he was speaking about the resurrection, but we've been speaking about the spiritual gifts. Remember what Paul said, each one of us is gifted. We're given a gift not for our own purpose, but to put it to God's purpose. Each one of us, in other words, is part of God's purpose, part of unique important part of God's plan. At some point in time, we become aware of this. We have to trust. We have to trust that God knows what he's doing. That God's grace is greater than my sins, my mistakes, my weaknesses. God knows what he's doing. You know, it's, a, a, it's been pointed out to me so many times, there were guys in my class who were far smarter. There was a guy in our class who left and has written 10 books. He's an ophthalmologist for children. He's a world expert. I mean, why isn't he here? There are guys who are much better at relating to people. Why aren't they there? Great social workers, teachers. What was God thinking? I have to trust that. Not just once, way back when I was a high school senior, but over and again. I've had to trust it over the years when I failed miserably, when I was aware of my sin, when I botched up. Times when I felt terrible. Should I do this? Should I keep going at this? Trust that God knows what he's doing. For all of us, those moments 
in our lives. On one level, to think, for example, of the gifts we've been given. To trust that indeed God has gifted me. God has gifted you. That just as he said to that just as Jesus said to Simon, come after me. I will make you fishers of men. Do I trust that he's saying the same to me? Come after me. I have something for you to do. I have something I want you to do for me. Do I trust that? That he knows me. That his grace is greater than my weakness, greater than my mistakes, greater than my failures. That he knows my imperfections, but he's chosen me. He's chosen you. You know, we are, I like to say, we are more scandalized by being human than God is. We get all upset at our failures and weaknesses. God doesn't. He forgives us. He keeps coming back to us. He never leaves us. We give up on ourselves. God doesn't. And tonight when we see the stories, we'll listen to the stories of those two men. It's a reminder to each one of us that we are also called, maybe not in as dramatic a fashion, but each one of us is called to play the role that we've been given by God. It is his choice not mine. Jesus says in John's Gospel, when he's talking to his disciples, it was not you who chose me, it is I who have chosen you. I have chosen you to bear fruit. Now, I am not my first choice. Quite honestly, I'm not even in the top ten. But for some mysterious, God only knows why reason, he has chosen me. And what I'm saying about myself, each one of us can say about ourselves. But do I trust he knows what he's doing? Isaiah did. Simon did. Countless, countless other men and women throughout our history have. And today, and tomorrow, and the next day, because it's a decision we make over and over again, not once in a lifetime, but over and again. It's a decision that we make. Do I trust in the Lord? Do I trust in his choice? Do I trust in his grace? Do I trust that my weaknesses, my failures, my mistakes, my sin are nothing before his grace? It's a choice we make over and again. And if you ever have any doubts, but well, we always will, think of Simon in the boat. Away from me, no, I can't. And what Jesus said, he would have none of it. No, you come after me. You're my choice. I have something for you to do. For me. If you have any doubts, close your eyes, silence your heart for a minute, and listen to the words of Jesus. No, you are my choice. I have something that you want to do for me. Trust that little voice. It is the voice of God. It is the voice of the Lord. It is the voice that is to guide us. Together, let us profess the faith. I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord.
Jesus Christ, the Lord be our Son of God, born of God, of the Lord of ages, God, 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 true God, and true God. Now I am my name, and I'm substantial with the Father, who will make all things for me. So I am our salvation, the kingdom of heaven, by the power of the Spirit, with the heart of the earth and the earth, our Savior, he was crucified and put his body, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and he rose from the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, as a kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the Lord of my life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified. It was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one Lord the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and the Lord the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, now let us pray that we and all people may respond with wisdom and courage to God's call. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all whom God has called through the gift of baptism to share in the work of his Son, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who serve in church ministries, lay, vowed, religious, and ordained, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For our parish family, that we may live out our calling each day in our neighborhoods, schools, and workplaces, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For all the sick, especially Jim Havern, Josephine McGovern, Mercedes Rehall, and Mylandi Cleozier. That they may find healing in the knowledge that they are loved by God, we pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, especially Christian Emilio Mano and Reverend Christopher Garitas, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions in our prayer intentions book and the prayers that we keep in our hearts and for Evelyn McParlin and Deborah Catherine Shea for whom this mass is offered we pray to the Lord the loving God who called us to share in the life-giving work of your son we pray especially for those to whom you have sent us, our families and our neighbors, and we pray for all with whom we share your son's work throughout the world, for all who are in need of your care. We ask all these things in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of the Holy Church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, he canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let's pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that may one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, please remember to take your bulletin when we leave Mass. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Have a we say to him, 721, the only God, we praise thy name. 721. <laughs>
They say how man. I think they need a quarter to do it. And that was about it. You wouldn't be able to over it. There's a lot of empty seats there, big so I go over here and there is a I know I don't. So I go over here and I said, I am giving you a whole mess. Oh, nobody was coming. Oh, yes. I don't call my So everybody can watch. Okay. Yes. Well, you can see the collection is only five thousand dollars. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Good. Yourself? Hang it in. That's a low size. Oh. Yeah, that's the lowest I've ever seen. That was 